We're here at Max and its studios in Silver Lake, California with DJ Dahi for a very special edition of Native Sessions with Red Bull Music Academy. Um, how are you? I'm doing good. Yeah? Yeah. Can you introduce yourself to the audience a little bit? Uh, my name is Dahi. My first name is Corey, but my, my professional music name is Dahi, which is my middle name. Um, and I'm from Los Angeles, California, specifically Inglewood. And I am a music producer. Um, mostly, I guess you could say genre-wise is hip-hop, R&B, um, but also do pop and, um, and rock. And I'm just influenced by a lot of different genres in general, so I try to just do whatever feels good. How do you do that? How do you translate their vision um, using kind of like these techniques? How do you know that you're honoring the vision or honoring the sound that, they, that they're trying to create? Uh, for me, when I kind of go into a, a situation for an artist, like I really First of all, I try to figure out what they want to say and do. Um, and in doing so, you kind of realize um, like what palette, I guess, of sounds or, you know, rhythmically or, you know, uh, pace um, is always like a big thing for me when I've come to, to, to making songs because I'm, I'm naturally like a drummer. You know, a lot of beats that I have, I try to have a unique uh, pocket of drums and stuff. And so for me, it's, it's the rhythm and then from there, it's like the chord progression and really figuring out like you know how the chords really ev uh, evoke a certain emotion. So if an artist, as I say, for like a Kendrick, you know Kendrick loves a certain type of chord set sometimes in, in his music, um, and it, that kind of like inspires him to write something. Usually he ha he's an artist that kind of has the songs in his head already, and he kind of knows what he wants to say yeah. uh, beforehand. So it's kind of a uh, it's just a it's kind of like really, he's the producer in some aspects and I can kind of go in there and help him flourish those ideas out. Um, but if you're working with the artist like uh, um, Banks, like Banks is a very um, kind of free flowing artist where she gets in the booth and she just lays down a bunch of melodies and just stuff that kind of has a unique feel and, and sound and then she'll go in and write to it um, and kind of feeling the words and different, but she's, she's, she kind of, she's alternating kind of things at the same time, just really trying to figure out the emotion that makes her feel something and then you, you, you kind of um, go along with it. So it's really just kind of, I look at being a producer as like being a psychologist in some ways, like you have to know how to um, try to get the best out of this person and then just capture it in a moment and just say, all right, cool, I got it, you know, and that's the job, that's your job is really, you're not the star, you're just kind of trying to be the, um, the trying to make the best product, you know what I'm saying, so that, so that it can, the song can be the best it can be, so. When you sit down at a keyboard, what's kind of the first steps that you go through? Um, I know you said you really love the Scarabee bass, you really love Reactor and Contact Libraries. Yeah. How do you, when you sit down, are those kind of the first three things that you approach? Yeah, for me, usually, um, I kind of, it, it depends. Sometimes I start with drums and then um, in starting with drums, I kind of can figure out, okay, this is, it kind of locks me in a certain, certain rhythm, um, and from there, sometimes I'll either I'll play chords. I'll just use different. Um, when I first got the complete um, uh, keyboard, the first model, um, model um, the biggest thing I was attracted to was the chord sets, mm -hmm. and the chord sets was really cool because it allowed me to automatically have song ideas already kind of put in place by just changing the chord sets and and trying different combinations of, of, of things with, you know, the different VSTs and, and sounds and stuff. So that was a really cool way to start an idea. Um, but usually sometimes I'll start with the bass. And um, the, the Scarabee bass is a bass, line, a bass I use all the time for a lot of my uh, just production ideas and stuff. And I've used it, I've used it, I pretty much use it all the time. Like even, even just to get the idea out, um, I just, I start with a bass line and it's in drums. And then from there, I just play and try to figure out, you know, where it, where it sounds and being and like even the, in this record that I just play, like all of this is just scary bass bass lines I played um, by using um, that and also using I think I used a guitar rig and um, had it kind of play through um, just different sounds and stuff. Uh, yeah. I'll play that bass line a little bit if I yeah. can find it. Uh, where is it at? Thank you. 
yeah just like putting a wah filter on it and just kind of setting like compression and eqs on certain things and you know i played it for a lot of people using my bass lines and they can't really tell if it's like a real bass or it's a fake bass but um it's cool it's just it's just a really cool tool contact in general has a lot of really cool um like really live um incorporating live sounds with kind of like the digital format where you really can unless you're really your ears are really tuned into it like you really can't tell the exact difference they have really great sample libraries and in doing so it allows me to kind of like create you know just that authentic feel and then I can kind of go back and if I need to get real players to play something I can but usually I, I, I start off with a lot of those melodies that I start making a beat is with that bass line yeah. using that bass program what about reactor how do you how do you implement that uh, I use reactor in tons of different ways um, it's kind of like a, a, a tool that I'm still I still don't know what the hell I'm doing but I kind of experiment it's like a really dope experimental kind of thing so from using um, the the mouth for uh, just variations of of, of, of um, ways to kind of digitalize vocals and trying to figure out different tuning aspects and different um, uh, uh, chord melodies by using uh, it um, I just I just love and it's pretty and it's pretty easy to tap and jump into it's like it's not a hard thing to, to really figure out you just kind of tune and figure out what the key of the record is and, and just kind of go from there um, and then um, using the uh, um, the razor I used to use that a lot like just for finding different sounds and, 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 and incorporating them in and, and um, uh, what else uh, my biggest thing I'm using lately is uh, molecular okay. um, I, I use that record I use that for uh, loyalty that I did uh, for the damn album um, and I just use it as a slight a very very slight um, effect mm -hmm. uh, and in regards to just using it on the drums and kind of having like a cool reverby um, uh, texture behind it, but just not reverby and delay, uh, reverb and delay texture in the record, um, but just like a slight bit, like just kind of glossing the, the track a little bit. Um, and it was cool because, and, and that was something that I, that uh, normally I wouldn't use on drums. You know, I don't really use it, I don't, but you, you can you can use it and really find different drum pockets that you may have not created if you're playing um by yourself or playing with the finger um and uh yeah i just i just love pretty much everything in reactor like it's a really cool tool that i've um i constantly go to just this just to spark an idea mm -hmm. if there's anything you know so mm -hmm. how yeah. often um do you involve the the artists and the kind of technical stuff of what you're doing um usually it's just it's it's um uh, it's all based on kind of like if they want to get nerdy with me about <laughs> certain things with what I'm using. Um, and I usually, if I'm working, like for example, like right now I'm working on on Schoolboy Q's album, and it's cool because he doesn't he doesn't have technical terms. He'll just say, "Yo, do the woo wop thing," <laughs> and can you add that wop? You know what I'm saying? Just using words, but then I just do something. Yeah, that's that's the sound. So it's just like a thing where you kind of like you experiment and do. But if you have like certain artists who who kind of know the technical terms for um effects and sounds and knowing how to how to treat you know things like it's just it's a it's kind of a depending on who it is you know like a lot of times it's just there's artists who kind of know they make beats themselves you know what i'm saying and really yeah. know how to you know, use certain lingo or just use certain things that i don't even use and it's like oh what if we, what if we try this and, and do that so it's just it's just you know, my like again, my job is really just to make the song better, and I don't want to like you know, get all you know, excited about talking to one about um, DBs and compression and <laughs> you know frequencies and it's like you know, but yeah. so, but some people do like it, you know I get excited about it you know what I'm saying it just it just it just depends on who I'm conversating with you know. You could get excited about it here. Yeah yeah no I mean yeah I, I'm, I can nerd out on some stuff for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um. What's your favorite? Uh. What's your favorite? aspect of it like what's what, what do you yeah. um for me uh my favorite aspect of specifically producing in no or, using the keyboard oh using the keyboard yeah um well the cool thing i like about the keyboard now 
is um, I have a lot of, it have easier access to kind of tweak sounds on the spot. Mm -hmm. So like I can pull up, you know, Yeah. I guess I can pull up a, pull it up. I'll pull up a, a sound and just kind of start to just modify it a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Um, So the cool thing about using it is now is that, you know, before if I was the, the MIDI, the mapping aspect of the effects and stuff was, um, oh, hold on, let me get make this up. Yeah, great. Oh, I hope this pops up. It can pop up. Let me see. Uh, see if I get some sounds. Okay. So the cool thing about this particular keyboard is that, you know, usually certain VSTs I'm using, um, I have to manually kind of go in and have every knob um, kind of set into a different um, thing to change the sound or effect. Mm -hmm. um, the cool thing about this is that now I don't, I don't have to do any of that. I can really just feel the music, try to figure out something while I'm going. Um, my goal is really not to look at the computer as much as possible. It just really kind of feel out what's going on and because um, I'm so used to looking at the computer all day so um, so a lot of times for me it's like I'm just tr I'm trying to find a process where I'm able to um, really experiment and then find something that's really unique you know mm -hmm. so for example uh, So I'll just I'll just make something. I'll experiment and try to find some cool. Yeah, walk us through it. Yeah. So let's see. Actually, I can do it here. This is a cool sound. So now I can. So I'll just I'll just lay this down. Um, let me let me do some chord sets too, just so I can. Um, Okay, so I'll, and I can record straight into it now. Uh, trying to remember. So it's recording, and I have a. Let me see if I have the. Uh, did it record? Uh, let me make it to a clip. So it's recording right now. Or it did record? It was just. I like is that I can I can go to the actual um, plugin and then really start to tweak the sounds, finding really cool. You started out as a drummer. How did you learn your way around the keyboard? Um, Was it self taught? I when I when I when I started making music, it was all with the saxophone. I played high school and band for years, and then um, 
it was just like one of the things where I kind of self-taught. My dad had instruments in the house and he played, he had drums and he had, he always had a bass guitar or a guitar in the house. And then um, from there I picked up, um, I think it's like sixth, seventh grade, I picked up a saxophone and just played throughout, throughout high school. But I didn't, key wise, I was never, I was never like a piano player. I just, you know, I could play it, you know, kind of like by ear, but I never like really learned the chords as much. Um, so using the keyboard, but when I started making beats, I usually, I never, I started on like a MIDI keyboard. Mm -hmm. I never really used like a drum machine or something. So just the way I could lay out my samples or different things, it was easy for me to um, uh, press the key and kind of get, get the familiarity of moving my ways around the keyboard with just like samples and drums and playing bass lines and stuff. So, mm -hmm. um, so it's been a cool, it's been a cool, Thing to learn a lot of things through the keyboard in different in a different way than just a kind of a, 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 a normal I guess you say like pe a self-taught or a person who's been taught to play the piano. Yeah. Um, so it's always but usually I just like making beats on a keyboard. It's it's I have I feel like I got more options if that makes sense. Like yeah. I, I'm not limited to like 16 pads or something like that. I, I just like to be able to go in different octaves pretty pretty easy. So um, yeah. So, but it, it's, it's a, it's, um, I think again, having everything, getting out of the computer is always to me the, 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 the goal for me now, because I feel like I'm so used to the process of having to sit and like have to make beats on my computer and like, you know, have to look at a screen rather than like feel the music and that's like always a super important thing, so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's see more of what you were doing earlier. Um, oh, you know what? My computer's about to die. Oh no. You can't do that. Um, let your side quick. I'll just print this out as a sample mm -hmm. and you know augment that into something else different you know what I'm saying like really um, start to uh, re let me see resample re have a clip sound and then I usually start to just mess with the, the audio and start to really figure out um, how to just mess it up, you know, kind of play around and see what it does. Um. Took like a reactor um, sample and ran, ran some sounds to that. See what it sounds like. exemplifies your use of this of, of, of these techniques that you think or like a favorite song in general that I've you that I've done yeah um. let me think 
think. When I'm using the the this, the reactor, um, well, I use it. I mean, the funny thing is, I use it in every record usually. Mm -hmm. um, either from using the um, the finger, I use that all the time for. All, or, I mean, it just depends on when I make worse behavior. I use the finger. Mm -hmm. I think when I use that that VST. Um, but that was just to augment the, the sample and, and start to using like the kind of like glitch sample chop thing with beats and stuff. And yeah. um, like, I'll, like I'll show you that one. Yeah. Uh, let me show you. Yeah, I can show you that a little bit. Um, so. So, uh, let's try, there we go, no. So the cool thing is, it's got to set up the MIDI for it. So what I do is. Yeah, walk us through it. So usually I just use it as a, I just use it as an effect thing, so I'll run all my sounds through the the, the finger, mm -hmm. and then I'll use the MIDI channel to trigger different effects that I'll do to it. So it's like an effect board, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and trying to find um, really cool ways to mess with the sound. So, give me an example, let me find a... Should should get something. Oh, there's an octave. Um. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know why it's not. Doing anything. Uh, let me see. Well, I don't want to hold up the no, I don't know, combo, right. but um, but usually, yeah, it's like it's what I use it for is, and if you if you, and it depends on what VS like which um, which um, um, DAW system using, like for Logic or for, for Ableton. Mm -hmm. um, but there's ways that, you, you know, um, really using using um, it as a, re Reactor to me is like an effect pedal kind of thing I use it for a lot of time. Mm -hmm. It's all based on kind of me um, either playing, playing MIDI, uh, playing different sounds, putting up different patches that have to do with um, just uh, the chain. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's why it wasn't working. That was right. So it's it's just really me um, using it as a effects board. Yeah. Really cool and get just. You know, just really glitching stuff, trying stuff, chops, you know. You know, you can, and it's, this could be a, you know, just a, a way to just get something on, on, on the spot that, yeah. that moves, that changes the record, you know. Yeah. So that's just an, like, an example of just an idea of how I'm using it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I use it, I, and again, I use it totally different. Like sometimes I'll, I'll set my own parameters 
different different effects well so it's not i don't get the same presets as other people that do sometimes mm -hmm. um but it's really just me kind of sitting down my goal usually is like if i if i get something that i that's that everyone else has like i got to figure out oh i got to use it a little bit different than other people because i, I can um i have to kind of make it my own sound but it's it's the cool thing is about reacting for this particular program like you it's very customizable you can set it up any way you like it and it's not like a hard thing to kind of like learn mm -hmm. you know it's not especially if you're not like technical with every you know specific things like it's just really just sitting really just sitting by yourself and just trying stuff and just testing it out and see if it works and um creating a new uh a new way of like finding something that you can go to just to get the spark of an idea yeah. um so for like a newbie uh, student of the of the keyboard of mm -hmm. um, what do you recommend how, how do you recommend they they start for a new for someone who's uh, who's just like finding their way around it specifically with anything in music or with um, no with the keyboard with the keyboard okay yeah. um, I mean I think it's you know it's all it to me it's like music making is like super like it's just super pref like it's all, all your preference of how you work and just to get your idea out um and i think the cool thing about the keyboard that uh, that i've come to come across that it's really cool to um just uh change the change the dynamic of like what a sound is actually mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because to me it's like when you're when you're making music um, everybody knows how to play the same chords or if you learn how to play music you can play sounds you can play um, um, you know you can learn how to do old McDonald how to farm yeah. you know what I'm saying but I, there's like 18 million ways to do old McDonald how to farm by just changing the sound or, or changing the, the parameter so to me the great thing about the keyboard as a new comp, uh, as a new you know producer or whatever is really figure out like what makes your own sound unique into who you are and what you're doing um, because that's how people are going to kind of recognize your your touch, you know, uh, yeah. and what you're doing. Because that's that's my ear. Then when I'm looking and hearing new stuff, I'm like, oh, that sounds that sounds pretty cool. That sounds kind of that sounds odd or that sounds really different. Um, yeah. And I think using again going back to the parameters of the of the thing, like it allows you to really just touch and feel and kind of automate on as you go. And in, in automating your sounds, like you will come up with something new and something unique. Um, and I think beforehand, you had to set up, you had to set your keyboard up, you know what I'm saying? You had to bring it in and be like, all right, let me, let me click this, map it to this, micro map, you know what I'm saying? There's a lot of just time that I had to do in like, you know, for me, I'm an open box person. Like I wanted to just kind of dive in and, and figure it out or I want to dive in and just start playing around. And that, I think that's the really cool thing about the, the keyboard that allows you to, to do that. So. Yeah. yeah. You were talking about um, having kind of a personal sound. What exemplifies a DJ Dahi sound? Because because you work with such a like wide range of artists. What do you? What's the what's the thing that people will be like? Oh, that's a Dahi beat. Uh, is there something? Is there a special uh, sauce? Yeah. I, I mean, I, I guess you can say there is. There, I mean, there are a lot of records I've done that have a certain kind of effect. Uh, either the certain reverbs or that I use or a certain. Um, type of drums I do. Um, but a lot of, I, I guess, I, I guess for me, it's like, I don't, I don't know if I have a sound, but I do have an approach to a music. Uh, Cause a lot of times it, it's really just, um, I think the two things you do, really, you, I guess one thing you, you, you do, I do have a unique kind of way of looking at drums and just patterns of drums. That's one thing and I think also too, um, the music that I'm involved, or artists that I've usually try to work with are doing, like I try to have some, have a record that sounds, it may not be the, the single, it may not be the biggest record on there, but it's, it's, it's going to be, going to be the lasting record on your, on your album. Like people are going to remember it. Mm -hmm. um, and that really just like really having a record that kind of stands on its own texture wise, sound wise, um, and then able to kind of, uh, make the artist an artist if that makes sense mm -hmm. like being able to say like oh this person is like a real creative person and it's it's a part of it because of that song you try something you do something new um so um that's usually my goal is really just to make 
um, something that does stand, even if it's, you know, you know, not the biggest song on the thing. It's like I just want that to stand out. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. What are some of your kind of finishing touches? You talked about your beginning. What are some of the kind of finishing touches that you, um, how do you approach like the glossy end of it? Um, usually it's a, it's a it's, it's a mixing thing for me. Uh, I kind of sit set time to just um, listen to records in certain environments and see how it sounds and if it needs something to um, kind of take it to the next. It's 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 almost like you. It's almost li I kind of if I can kind of put in a, a uh, what you call it a um, a uh, a visual picture. It's almost like. Driving your car up to to the cliff <laughs> of a of a of a you know mountain whatever, and you want to get it you want to get it just to the the edge yeah. before it tips over, because and that and that analogy is like you want to get the record just enough mm -hmm. before you f it up you know what I'm saying <laughs> because it, in some ways it, it's just the idea of like record sometimes like you can overproduce it you know what I'm saying you really mm -hmm. it's like sometimes. You can underproduce it by just not knowing how to, you know, just finish a record. Just, it just sounds like an idea. But also, too, like you just put too much in the actual record. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of like from, I learned a lot that from just making beats and just kind of figuring out, oh, like, man, my beat is crazy, but nobody could actually ever rap on it because it's just too much going on. Yeah. So it, it kind of went too far. So you just got to kind of know, you know, usually I try to start with skeletons and then I'll give it to an artist and be like, oh, what do you think of that? And then, oh, that's dope. And then try to, you know, write, then I'll try to write to that. And then when they after write it, then I can go in and, you know, really complete the, 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 the project. And that's really basically like for me, you know, using their lyrics or what their words are to kind of like shift the beat. Yeah. Um, um, or take things out mm -hmm. or put things in to accent what they're saying or, or not saying. So it's really just those kind of things as to kind of know how to um, shape the record based off what the actual artist is doing because it mm -hmm. helps you it guides you you know what I'm saying in, in your approach of like oh okay we should take that out and do that and do that and um yeah just you know and I think the last thing I think about is usually um I think every time I think of a record like I kind of think about Pharrell when he makes records and it's just in my back of my head like to me Pharrell is really great at um having like all his records sound like it only has like seven sounds, <laughs> but he knows how to make those seven sounds sound cool. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And really know how to like have it uniquely kind of placed, but it's not as simple. You know what I'm saying? It's it's complex, but it's simple. Like it's like it has a simplicity to it that I've always like really liked. Um, and that's actually the Neptunes and Chad. I won't say just for real, but it's like both of those guys. You know, their records like they really always had a a real simplicity about what they were doing, but it was like. The sounds they picked were like super unique and stuff. So, yeah. What are some rookie mistakes that budding beat makers make when they're first starting out, or or mistakes maybe that you've made when you first start, like, you know, if yeah. you're like looking back on an album and you're like, oh, I, sh I shouldn't have done that. Well, it's it's a uh, it's you know mistakes are they're kind of it's a two way street because sometimes when you want to get on and you want to get on a record. You know, you just try to, you know, you give someone the beat, and then you it's out of your control, and then you don't hear the, you won't hear the record until it comes out. Mm. And so that's to me, it's like, it's kind of like getting to the point where you have to say like, I want to kind of follow the whole process throughout the line from the mixing to the recording to the to when it's done because there's been times where I've like, I'm like, man, this record sounds dope, and as soon as I hear it, it's like my whole wave file was shifted like a bar <laughs> behind in the beat. You know what I'm saying? Like it, and I was like, you know, who the hell let this go? And I couldn't, I couldn't do anything about it because I kind of trusted, you know, the process and be like, ah, uh, you know, but it's, it just depends on, you know, you have to kind of, kind of take pride in that, that process of just like kind of making sure it gets to the point, the finish line correctly. Um, and, but sometimes that's out of your hand and you can't do anything about it. Um, so that's one rule, and I think another thing is, um, uh, I guess when you speak, like just be just when you when you're in a session and you kind of 
are just in, in the circle of everything, just kind of like, you know, kind of just kind of have something to say, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Like really have something that's, that's viable to the record. Because sometimes I feel like you get in a situation where you, every, you know, you're kind of saying yes, 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 this is dope. But don't just say yes because that person said yes. Like have, be critical in it because people are going to respect your, respect your, um, your voice in it. Because uh, mm-hmm. you're saying, you're, you're coming from a place of like, I want to make the record better. So you have to kind of just, you know, even if it's sometimes, sometimes it could be at a detriment, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, I know this is hot, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And you'd be like, all right, cool. But at least you, at least you can kind of just, you know, say I, I, I put my word in to say that this needs to be right or this not. Because again, sometimes a lot of artists sometimes have a lot of yes men in the, in the room. And mm-hmm. if you don't, if you don't, the room has to be, the important thing is about the room, like the room has to be honest and has to be kind of just in the process of making a good song. Because everybody's intentions can't be, they have to be, they have to be in, in, in accordance to making it work. You know what I'm saying? If one person wants to be the, um, the star, but he ain't the star, mm-hmm. that's gonna seep through. You know what I'm saying? That's gonna, somebody, he's gonna wanna play extra keys. <laughs> I own extra shit, and you be like, we don't need all that. You know what I'm saying? But it's just, it can mess up the vibe of the room. So yeah. it's just a lot of those things where you kind of go in, you just have to kind of know what to say and, and be in, and, and, and um, I think people are going to respect that as, you know, they're going to go to you for more than just a beat. They're like, yo, what do you think about this? Can you help me finish this record? Can you, because you, because the, the way you think about music is more from a, you know, honest point of view. Yeah. What are some things you do, like making a beat and then throwing it out into the ether to like who, uh, you know, whoever's in the final process? How do you like build trust um, between artists and all the other producers working on the project? How do you build trust to like know between all of those people and like so that you can feel good about like sending them the beat and you can feel good about the way yeah. that they're going to use it? Um, I mean, it's it's a it's a process of of kind of. Um, uh, you, you just know people's intentions. Like, it's almost like, you know, I know a lot of engineers who just want to be engineers. Yeah. But I know engineers who want to be a producer. And I know sometimes it's like sometimes I have to be like, don't add nothing to my record, just <laughs> make it dope, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, or... You know, it's just, it's just, again, it's all about intention. Like, it's just like some people don't, you have to kind of know, like, okay, this person is really helping me. This person is really going to help me finish the record. And that's really just an experiment of, like, you know, recommendations from a friend. Like, oh, you should work with this guy. He's a really good, good guy at, at, um, um, at uh, engineering. Or he's really great at, at arrangement. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because um, back in the day, a lot of great records were really, it was like streamlined. You had... You had a um, songwriter who would write the song with the artist, or write the song in general, and then the artist would sing it. And then the producer would come in and be like, okay, the song's done, I'm going to do the song. Let me get the best you know, musicians to come play all this stuff, record it, dope, got the engineer great. Then I might bring in an arranger to come in and say like, oh, can you add a spice to this, whatever, they'll come do that part. Then that will go to the mixer, mixer does this part, then that goes to Matt. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Yeah. It used to be very streamlined. Everybody just kind of did what they did. Now yeah. it's kind of like you have to do jack of all trades. So in some ways, you you know the the process has mm-hmm. kind of lost its um, it's uh, it just lost that 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 focus. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So in some ways, you, you you it's all based on like you know friends and kind of people telling me like, oh, you should work with this person. And then you just build, you just build and build, and then you kind of figure it out. Okay, this person's really good for this, and do that. And for me, lately, it's all been project based. So if I'm working on a project, yeah. there's kind of like a team involved already too. So it's easier for me to be like, okay, let's. Oh, I know, to, I know who to bring in for this this thing. Yeah. I know to do that, and it's all. It's really just if I like the person, you know what I'm saying, and I, and the energy is great, and, um, you know, like for example, the stuff we did for. Um, for Damn, it was really cool because I got to really, you know, bring in some friends of mine who like are really great musicians and like, oh, like, um, 
like Danny Danny Keys, who's really great at like just improvisation, music stuff, and, and playing stuff. And he just, I was like, yo, you're in you're like we were just in New York one day. I was like, yo, come by, mm -hmm. and start playing. You know, just just come by. So people, I know, I know, I like you. So once you're in this circle, like these people are gonna like you. Yeah. And then after that, it just kind of came. Oh, dope, you're dope. Can you come back tomorrow? Can you come back? You know what I'm saying? So it's a very, it's a very like. You kind of make first impressions, and then when people kind of know that they, the energy's good, then now it's like, okay, let's, let's, let's kind of work and, and get things done. Um, and yeah, and, and people make, and then that, if you can make the business easy, yeah. is another aspect too, like making yeah. the business like really simple, not a lot of, you know, I did this thing, I added this extra thing, and it makes it a little bit more like, okay, everybody's trying to do rigor room. Yeah. Um, you just want to have the idea of like trying to make the record for now, and then hopefully you can more opportunities will come. So. Can, you, can you play us out with a beat? Uh, it's, yeah, play us with something. Mm -hmm.